माइंड साउंड रेसोनेंस टेक्निक एम एस आर टी दिस इज वन ऑफ द एडवांस टेक्निक्स दैट वी हैव बीन यूजिंग इन विवेकानंद केंद्र योग रिसर्च फाउंडेशन टू डील विथ ऑल द फाइव कोशास द फाइव लेयर्स ऑफ अवर एग्जिस्टेंस कॉल इट फाइव बॉडीज we have different techniques to deal with the annamaya kosha we use the physical exercises the loosening practices the shithrikaran vyayama yogasanas the yogic postures the kriyas the cleansing techniques and the cyclic meditation to go deeper and to affect deep relaxation at the body level and slowly move towards the pranic layer beyond this physical body we have the pranic body called as uh, the vital body made out of prana and to bring the balance of pranic body we use the breathing practices the kriyas sectional breathing the pranayama and the advanced technique is the pranic energization technique the, or the pet much expansive and wider than pranamaya kosha is manomaya kosha the astral body as it's often called made out of uh, the mind stuff and to deal with the mind and to bring control and mastery over the mind and emotions we use the dharana dhyana samadhi as we call the focusing the meditation and to get into the super conscious state the the antaranga yoga of patanjali and to deal with our emotions so we use the bhakti yoga the science of emotion culture mastering our emotions and the advanced techniques that we use here mastering the emotions technique mmt mind imagery technique mirt mind sound resonance technique msrt then comes vignana maya kosha much subtler much wider more pervasive than the mano maya kosha and this is uh, the sheath of wisdom the body of vijnana and uh, here the knowledge is supreme if you tune to this level we have the complete knowledge of the whole creation the past present and the future and almost a stage of perfection a level of consciousness which the highest of yogis almost reach and in vijnana maya kosha we use uh, the techniques of understanding analysis through lectures through yogic counseling methodology and the subtle technique we use the advanced technique that we use is called as the vijnana sadhana kaushala or in short visak v i s a k then the most pervasive all pervasive almost uh, which is the ananda maya kosha the body of bliss the sheet of bliss the layer of bliss here we are just bliss embodied hardly any differences have come and we are all one in this phase of ananda in this phase of ananda maya kosha in the sheet of uh, bliss because it is transcendental no differences have arisen yet and we are all one that is the ananda maya kosha normally to bring this ananda into our lives we have the working in blissful awareness as has been postulated and emphasized in bhagavad gita yoga sthak kuru karmani sangham tyaktva dhananjaya it is the yoga stha hokar kaam karna it is to completely tune ourselves to this uh, yoga sthiti or ananda sthiti or the state of transcendence and do the activities that is yogastha kuru karmani 
and to bring that bliss into our lives and spread in day to day life is to improve the quality of life is to bring bliss into our lives that is the anandamaya kosha operation and uh, through the karma yoga modules that we use we bring that bliss into action and the advanced technique of yoga we use at this level is called anandamruta sinchana anams and today we are going to learn and understand the technique of mind sound resonance technique msrt well there are three terms mind sound and resonance what is mind according to modern science people for long have been believing that the mind is nothing but functioning of the brain cells and uh, the thinking goes on if it goes on on the left side it's the verbal mode the logical brain if it goes on on the right side it is um, the emotional intuitive brain and uh, this has been our understanding for long but in recent years there has been tremendous uh, research and progress in brain research and people have started believing that there is something beyond mere functioning of the brain cells call it mind call it consciousness and what not we are in the progress of uh, achieving or understanding or getting in depth knowledge about this uh, uh, separate entity you know which is extremely creative it is uh, a sort of consciousness which can change the function of the brain cells but according to yoga and spiritual lore as has been developed in this country we understand that mind is a conglomeration of thoughts it's an assemblage of thoughts and thoughts and thoughts and these thoughts could be manifest or unmanifest as it happens in the wakeful and dream stages the thinking goes on consciously or at the subconscious level and there are dualities and multiplicities and diversities of thoughts but then in sushupti in the deep sleep or whether it is in the unconscious stage or the hypnotic stage the mind is not working but it is in the unmanifest phase it is in the seed form and patanjali is very clear in defining chitta the mind as consisting of all these dimensions of mind and in these dimensions as he mentions in the sutra pramana viparyaya vikalpa nidra smrutaya even the memory store consisting of all our samskaras tendencies knots blocks obsessions phobias and what not everything that is there in the superconscious and the subconscious mind all included in the definition of chitta or the mind defined by patanjali so pramana the direct knowledge the viparyaya the improper knowledge and we have vikalpa just the distractions of the random mind with no substance nidra the deep sleep and smrutaya the entire memory store therefore when we talk about controlling the mind mastering the mind in the sutra of patanjali yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha he has been very clear that not only our distractions of the mind should go away not only you must have mastery over the manifest thoughts and the mind but also on the unmanifest dimensions of the mind and only then there is going to be total mastery and total stoppage of the mind and which leads us to our causal state tada drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam he says therefore the concept of mind is far comprehensive than the present understanding that we have today in science the second sound sound according to modern science and physics is nothing but vibrations the vibrations that travel through compressions and rarefactions in a medium the medium could be air the medium could be hydrogen oxygen anything and this medium is very necessary for the travel of the sound 
If the medium is not there, then the sound will not travel. The famous bell jar experiment. With the air in, the sound is heard outside. With the air evacuated from the jar, you don't hear the sound. Therefore, it is the audibility, it is the medium that is necessary for sound. Without the medium, the sound is not heard, is not traveling. That is the concept of sound or shabda in modern science. But in yoga and spiritual lore, the concept of shabda is given as a character or a quality of space. Shabda gudakam akasham. It is mere spanda, it is mere vibrations. And it can travel with a medium or without a medium. When it travels with a medium, it is equivalent to the sound that we hear, the sound definition of science. That is called as the ahata shabda. But once it goes through no medium, just space, you know, even through the states of vacuum, it can move, just as electromagnetic radiations move. All that can be included in the definition of shabda or the sound as defined in yoga and spiritual lore. So it is merely vibrations, movements, waves, compressions and rarefactions uh, in the ahata phase and in the anahata phase it could be all electromagnetic radiations and it could be mental waves, it could be waves of thinking and all that included in the sound. And then the third phenomenon, resonance. Resonance occurs when two waves of sound match in frequency and in phase. Then there is going to be an increase in amplitude. The two waves going in phase, starting at the same time and with the same frequency, the same amplitude, then there is going to be double of the amplitude. They match together. It is something like matching. The phenomenon of resonance was found first in Britain when a group of army officials and jawans were marching across a bridge and as they reached the end of the bridge, the bridge oscillated and collapsed down. No typhoon, no floods, nothing whatsoever and they were all surprised and amazed as to why the bridge broke down. A group of scientists were put into operation and soon they found with intense effort the phenomenon of resonance. When they marched across the bridge, the frequency of march ma matched with the natural frequency of the bridge and the bridge started oscillating, went into resonance and it collapsed. Therefore the rule, break the steps as you march across a bridge. The phenomenon of resonance is very well understood today in modern physics and the harmonics of sound waves can generate not only resonance but the higher harmonics, higher resonance and then build what is called as flutter. It can just bring about uh, tremendous uh, uh, movements and sort of oscillations. This was found in aeronautics when the airplanes and the wings of the aircrafts went into flutter with the harmonics resonating. Different parts of the wings separately uh, oscillate and went into resonance. That is the flutter. And what is the concept of resonance in yoga and spiritual lore? This is uh, essentially called as uh, the tuning. You know. It is the shruti. A tambura, a veena, and you go on doing the shruti, plug the string and the whole uh, tambura ravina beautifully resonates. The concept of resonance was very well known to our seers. And you have to match your frequency. When you match your frequency with anybody else, then there is going to be resonance that takes place. So therefore we have mind, sound and resonance. And the mind sound resonance technique essentially works on bringing resonance at the body level by using the mental sound. When we have Brahmari or we have a chant of a A, O or Ma or any sound, you may generate sound at the physical body level by the loud sound, by the Ahata Shabda. Uh... You can feel the resonance and the vibrations throughout the body. That's fine, that's resonance. 
But when you repeat the same sound in the mind, can you generate the resonance in the body level? And that is what MSRT himself. Why should uh, one at all get to this resonance in the mental sound? To produce this uh, resonance at the body level by the mental sound, you have to relax tremendously and you have to develop high sensitivity and you have to grow to a higher level of consciousness. And the whole MSRT helps us to move from one level of consciousness to higher by increasing the sensitivity level and the expansion level. The depth of perception and expansion of awareness, as we have been seeing in uh, the cyclic meditation, is the core. You, know. you increase the sensitivity and you relax more and more. And more you relax, greater the sensitivity, greater the sensitivity and greater expansion, then there is going to be the feeling and the wonderful experience of that resonance in the body by repeating the sound in the mind. Therefore, initially in MSRT we use A, U, M and the combination of these sounds to generate resonance at the body level by chanting them loudly, Ahata Shabda. But as we progress, as we go to the next step, we repeat the same sound loudly and then in the mind. Ahata and then Anahata. And produce the same resonant wave throughout the body. And once we start training ourselves by using the fundamental sounds A, U, Ma and generate resonance in the body, then we go to the patterns of resonance through the mantras. Mantras are the wonderful combination, the special patterns of resonance that are produced by special combinations of the sounds, words and letters. Mantras form the fundamental dimensions of the Tantra Shastra, uh, yet another science almost equivalent to the Yoga. And uh, in the Mantra Shastra, you start using different mantras. And each mantra has two dimensions. One is its exoteric dimension, another is the esoteric dimension. The exoteric is the effect that produces at the external level. While there are certain things which go on at a very subtle level, at the deeper level, and that is the esoteric dimensions, which are unseen, generally, for the normal grass things. Something happens at the subtler levels. For example, when you go on repeating the mantras loudly, it will produce resonance in the body level, and it will produce deep relaxation, maybe, or it may energize the body, and different effects of different mantras are available. But the esoteric dimension of the mantras are much deeper. It works at the pranic level, probably at the mental level and at the buddhi level, bringing about great transformations. And every mantra that has been knit or discovered or uh, invented by our ancient Maharshis have different effects. And the mantra shastra has been used very effectively in the Vedic rites and uh, rituals in the yagnas, havanas, homas and all that, the mantras have been used. And when we use a particular mantra, it has to be chanted properly, it has to be produced with the accuracy that has been prescribed there. Without that, the mantras will not give the desired effect. And particularly when these things are used in the Agnihotra, the Pura Mimamsa dimension, even the opposite effect may start coming. Yasya Agnihotra Madarsha Mapurna Masam Achaturumpnasya Managrayana Matithi Vajitancha. When it is done wrongly with Adarsha, Apurna Masa, Anagrayana, Atithi Vajitam, all the prescribed do's and don'ts, you don't do the things rightly at the right time and at the proper prescribed time, and then you don't do the uh, Atithi Satkara and so on and so forth, then Aloka Mastasya Lokan Hinasti. That seven loka, seven generation, it may have the deteriorating effect. Therefore, it has got the boomerang effect also. It has to be done properly, the mantras. And the inner esoteric dimensions of the mantras are understood by the great seers, by the great yoga masters, great tantric um, excellent masters. 
Now, for example, the esoteric dimension of the Lalitha Sahasranama and Vishnu Sahasranama could be quite different. In one of the uh, well-known organizations, uh, Lalitha Sahasranama was used for a long time and continuous chanting of Lalitha Sahasranama uh, brought about uh, the stimulations in terms of increased sexual activities, increased anger, increased irritability and some people started suffering from hypertension, little heart trouble and so on and so forth. So the Swamiji in charge there, then he realized that there is something happening with this mantra and they switched over to Vishnu Sahasranama and found all the problems started getting reduced, there is calming effect. So every mantra has its own effect and Dalita Sahasranama, if it is in the process of invoking and stimulating and developing the Kundalini Shaktis, the Vishnu Sahasranama is cooling and calming down of the mind and pacifying the mind and that is the Vishnu Sahasranama. And the smallest of the mantras uh, is the Omkara. And we have a very powerful and very useful mantra, which is called the Mahamrutyanjaya mantra, with particular applications of this MSRT in mind to cancer and AIDS patients. The one of the major blocks in these patients is one of anxiety, fear, particularly the fear. To overcome fear, this Mrutyanjaya Mahamantra, Mahamrutyanjaya Mantra, is an extremely useful one. Om Trayamba Kambyajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukami Vabandhanat Mrutyor Mukshi Yamamrutat We offer our salutations to the three-eyed Shiva Trayamba Kambyajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam to spread the fragrance to increase the vitality and to release us from the bondage of this mortality and to raise us to that freedom and that immortality. Just as a cucumber when it is ripe, it just comes out of the creeper without any effort, effortlessly it comes down. Urvarukamiva Pandhanat Mrutyo Mukshi Amamrutat And that is the prayer to Lord Shiva. And by repeating this mantra, gradually the fear gets vanished and the patients start gaining confidence. Therefore, we have chosen this Mahamrutyanjaya mantra as uh, the key mantra which we repeat loudly initially and generate the patterns of resonance and later on we repeat that in the mind to generate the same pattern of resonant vibrations in the body. Once we start doing that, we start going to deeper and deeper layers of consciousness and things will start moving and then we start progressing. The entire sound dimension of the mind is being utilized in this whole practice, in mind sound resonance technique. And in the end, we allow this vibration to spread, expand and diffuse into that silence, that all pervasive reality. And we can feel the vibration spreading and spreading and spreading and diffusing into that complete infinite silence. And that infinite silence is the abode of all knowledge, creativity, freedom and bliss. And to stay in that silence, and in that silence to invoke the resolve. The resolve is a positive thought that we have chosen Every patient can have their own thought, can have their own words formulated that I am extremely healthy. For example, the entire immune system I have is extremely strong. I am very, very light and energized. I am full with health and vitality. People could choose any thought that they want. and. Repeat that thought, repeat those words in the mind clearly and with the bottom of the heart, with the total faith, ultimately what we are is what we think we are. If you have very positive thought, then the whole transformation takes place and you are extremely positive. 
If on the other hand you always start thinking negatively and very critically and say I am useless, I am weak, I have no energy, I have no faith and you start becoming weaker and weaker and then petty and small. That's the whole process. Mind is the maker of its own destiny. Manayeva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayo. That is the basic philosophy for this resolve. Choose a positive thought and repeat it. Repeat it nine times from the bottom of the heart with the fullest faith, with total sincerity. And slowly the thought gets fructified. And the type of positive thought that you have taken, if it is nearer home, it works soon. If it is far home, it takes a long time. If you take a very, very ambitious, positive thought that I am Atman, I am Atman, I am Atman, well, it may take maybe years, it may take generations. But on the other hand, if you say that today I am going to be extremely happy throughout the day, yes, it will start fructifying right away. If you feel that throughout the day I am going to be very relaxed, very comfortable, yes, it may start working. So therefore, choose a thought, choose a resolve, which is nearer home. Just a step further from where we stand today. Then it starts working, and as it starts working, the growth starts coming, and the faith develops, and slowly you start going to higher and higher resolves, you can do that. But unless the first resolve is not completed, you do not change your resolve, continue the same resolve. And at the end of the resolve, repeated nine times, we go into the prayer to offer all our growth and our energy to the welfare of the whole world. And that has been the ideal of this country. Sarve bhuntu sukhina, let all people be happy. Sarve santu niramaya, let nobody suffer from pain and misery and the dukkha. And let everybody progress. Sarve bhadrani pashyantu, realize the truth, reach ultimate reality and for the peace and peace and peace of the whole universe and particularly our country, we start working on that. So we end that thing by the chant. Therefore on the other side we now give the instructions of the entire practice and you are welcome to look into these cassettes and put it on and then practice. And any problems you have you are most welcome to contact us at Prashanti Kutiram where we run the courses and also we train the people.